Notwithstanding the early exit of President Duterte from, from his trip to Moscow, how do we now um, qualify mm -hmm. any success or any, anything that may have uh, uh, been limited by his short stay there? Well, of course, right now, uh, we cannot really tell yet with the extent of the uh, treaties and agreements that we have sealed with, uh, with our Russian uh, friends, as President Duterte would like to call them. However, uh, we would see right now at this very moment that it's already been a big step towards uh, improving our relations with Russia. Mm -hmm. It's a very, uh, I'd say, a huge leap from how we conducted our relations with them for the last 40 years. So while, of course, we haven't seen yet how exactly or how we could qualify these kinds of agreements, more or less we could say that we have made uh, significant steps towards improving or warming further our ties with Russia. Okay, in terms of those relationships, latest SWS survey shows that Filipino trust for Russia is still in the negative territory yes. or just, just below 50%. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, taking that number mm -hmm. relative to history, is that on the uptrend or is that just normal? Well, actually, Robbie, it's kind of different to look at it in the context of the Philippines because, um, well, as we all know, we have a very troubled or I'd rather say nuanced position during the Cold War. And all yes. of this, uh, what we're trying to witness right now with regard to warming up our relations with Russia is more or less rooted with how the Philippines positioned itself during the Cold War. Yes. Well, uh, particularly for this, we could uh, understand the very low, I'd say, we could call it more or less negative perception, precisely because during the Cold War days, Russia was always, or at least Soviet Union back then, was always painted as a mystery, as something that is uh, deeply rooted with evil, so to speak. And it's something that has kept us Filipinos. They were always actually, the bad guys. Yes, especially in Hollywood films. Yes. So more or less, uh, we were... Um, I would say, uh, made to believe that yeah. uh, the Russians are the bad guys yes. and the bad people. And that is why, more or less, this has caused, the, I'd say, animosity, if not mystery, yes. towards the end of the Actually, Philippines. Actually, uh, Russian ambassador to the Philippines, Igor Kovayev, has mm -hmm. a glass-half-full perspective mm -hmm. on this. He says that given our relationship with the United States, it's pretty uh, impressive, actually, mm -hmm. that 40-plus that percent of Filipinos do trust mm -hmm. uh, do trust russia yes well it's uh knowing that it's actually uh, we, we we could call that uh, we could look at it from an optimistic point of view that but uh, well at least now we could tell by the numbers that actually the more there are at least 40 say percent of filipinos who trust or believe in russia and i think more or less um depending on how president duterte would try to steer his foreign policy his call for an independent foreign policy towards gearing russia then more or less we could see how whether these numbers would evolve. But definitely, it's actually already a big step that we're actually paying attention to Russia right now. If yes. I may say, Robbie, like for the, I've, I've seen that the Russian embassy has noted that for the last 40 years, so that's like four decades of formal yes. relationships already, there are only 22 agreements signed mm -hmm. or more or less formalized. Yes. Compare that to the nine, for example, that mm -hmm. you have just mentioned was being sealed here yeah. in the recent trip. But in this last trip, uh, President Duterte, one of the foundations that he also wanted to establish with, with Russia was probably, I mean, one of the most difficult tips going from uh, the United States mm -hmm. to Russia specifically on matters of security mm -hmm. and particularly getting support in getting new weapons. But from the snippet at least that we've seen uh, from his face-to-face uh, mm -hmm. -face talk with, uh, with uh, Putin, Putin, Putin didn't seem particularly, I mean, committed mm -hmm. to this and uh, wasn't fully uh, endorsing what President Duterte was asking for. Do we read anything into this? Well, actually, it's, um, as we all know, President Putin is also a, uh, I'd say, uh, something that is full of enigma in itself. So actually, it's hard to difficult, it's kind of difficult to read the signs just by trying to base our judgment on his, uh, the way he responds or his emotions, so to speak. However, uh, pres President Putin, in his own right, is actually... Uh, in Russia, back in Russia, he's also known as someone who is stern in, mm. in terms of trying to conduct his uh, affairs with uh, politicians or, say, for example, uh, members of the uh, diplomatic corps. So I guess uh, there's really no much reading with this kind of things, trying to look at the, how he reflects. But how I think, looking from the Russian counterpart, I see it as a really positive development in terms of the relationships between the Philippines and Russia, having President Duterte welcomed warmly and at, uh, at not that just that, he's really welcome right into the Kremlin. Okay. So that is something that we should uh, be looking forward to 
for the next, uh, I'd say, future of our relations with them. Uh, Kevin Gomez of the UP Center for Integrative and Development Studies, 